Greetings, everyone. Hello, friends. Hello. 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 Yes. Yeah. Already a lot of people here. We expect a fairly large crowd here. So just going to get ourselves, take a moment to let things start to kind of come in like the popcorn. Uh, mm -hmm. Great to see your faces. Yeah. Some brand new faces, some faces that are familiar. And some faces that may have went, been once familiar, but aren't. Hey, guys. Hey. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> okay. So people are still coming in. I'm yeah, just, lots of people coming in. I'm just going to be hitting the admit button. And uh, know that there are a lot of you uh, today coming in, and uh, so uh, we want to welcome you all. Yeah, and Kevin has already started in the chat. What might be a nice thing if you're up for it? Uh, where are you from? Yeah. Also, just being uh, very transparent that obviously we are recording this, and we intend to share this recording with other people interested in this program, but also pieces of this, and we might, you know, snip out as little learning modules. So, you know, be aware that you're being recorded, and if you'd like to change your name, you'd rather not your real name be on here, that's fine. We hope that not all of you will go incognito, but if you need to, do that, and Turn off your camera. Feel free to do that if that allows you to participate while you know you're being recorded. And uh, yeah, just want to let you know that that is afoot. Good. And then we'll also have a, an AI. <laughs> I can't do anything about making an AI these days. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's going to be an AI transcriptor. So there'll be somebody dialing in. Uh, with the word AI in it. So if you see that, don't get too alarmed. Uh, yeah. And it's it's actually not ours. We noticed that one of uh one of you is, has an AI note taker that you've that you are you have coming along to this with you. So that's all cool. And Michael, just so you know that I'm not I'm not recording a transcript of this. Oh okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. All right. Okay. So that's uh well, let's get started, and um, there will be um, more people coming in, I'm guessing, and so I'll be manning the buttons here, or womaning the buttons, or depending on how. <laughs> uh, I do some something if you prefer to keep me awake. Okay, so if you're talking, um, you might want to mute yourself. I really don't want to. There we go. Thanks. Awesome. Okay. So um, anyway, so greetings, everybody, and uh, those who are both present and will be watching the recording. And welcome to this, our inaugural launch of the Vertical Facilitator uh, program. Morgan. <laughs> uh, I wasn't the only one cheering, just so you know. <laughs> I, I, I saw Joran, and I had to follow him. <laughs> I mean, this has been a long time coming, and um, so uh, we'll tell more of the, more of the legacy uh, behind some other point, but not, uh, maybe not now. But anyway, at any rate, so I'm Michael Hammond, and I'm really happy to be here with you all. And I'm Lisa Atkins. Welcome, everyone. So we have a bit of a, um, <laughs> there's a tension uh, that, uh, that we're going to be holding here because we're doing uh, these webinars more about vertical facilitation than they are exemplifying it. So it's a somewhat unusual way. I mean, those of you who know that, Lisa and me, know that we are in the business of, uh, of vertical facilitation. Incidentally, if you're in a place that may become up noise in it, go ahead and mute yourself. Um, so, uh, so this is going to be there's a fair bit of information. We only have 90 minutes, and 90 minutes goes by very quickly. And so um, we're going to be holding the tension between sort of sharing enough information for you to get a sense for, of, of what this course is, 
while at the same time being able to presence the sort of distinctions that we'll be describing. And we're going to be in that tension. And uh, um, so we just wanted to be very open and transparent with you about that. Yeah. And just also know that we're laying down concepts in these two webinars and the deep dive program is absolutely the time to go into all of those for like how they show up in your world. Where's the gaps for you in your facilitation and helping people develop vertically? Um, so that's the smaller group and that is very intentional group work and also individual work. Yep. Yep. Cool. All right. Great. So now, of course, you know what's coming is, is slides. <laughs> so we're <laughs> slides, and um, uh, <clears throat> we uh, we're going to take a moment from now, just a couple of moments, where we're going to invite some uh, a bit of sharing, um, um, just so you know that that's that will be folded in. Okay, let me just bring this up. Say something funny or entertaining or something. I'm having a little. I fun. just thought it would be nice to you know give have a break to breathe. I was just letting people breathe. You know, we're all moving from one thing to the next so off so fast these days. I accidentally yeah. sent you a, un, a mute message, Andrew. Sorry about that. <laughs> well, I guess that was funny. Yeah, <laughs> my laptop is so slow. By the time yeah. or so slow. By the time I yeah. Hit that so people are, people are asking for, uh, for the recording of this. If we're going to send the recording of this to everyone who signed up for this, so you're definitely going to be getting the recording afterwards, for sure. Yeah, cool. All right, well, good. So let's get started. So um, the the name of this program, of course, is the Vertical Facilitator, and uh, it's my uh, Lisa and myself. And, um, and we want to start with just saying something about the intention for part one of the learning journey. So the learning journey, we, we conceive it as essentially really kind of three parts. Um, the first part is this kind of an overview of vertical facilitation. Uh, the second part is a very deep dive into the practices and skills and manner of presence. And then the third part is a follow-up to the deep dive. And so the intention for this part of the learning journey is to provide a learning environment in which you have an essential base understanding of vertical facilitation of what it might take for you to master it. So one of the things you want to start to pay attention to is any gap that might be there for you, like a gap between where you are now around the distinctions and ideas of this and where you might want to be or need to be to master this. So that's one thing you might want to be looking out for. And the intention for this session is to provide a brief, both a conceptual and a somewhat experiential foundation for understanding what this is and what it might entail. Cool. All right, so here's what we'll cover today, all right? The first thing we're gonna cover is the activity of vertical facilitation. So today is really, we're gonna reveal the kind of the overall model. We're gonna unfold it uh, in a certain way. Uh, we want to say something about vertical learning. In the next session, we're going to go more deeply into vertical learning and into the adult developmental uh, ideas that are behind this work. And, um, and then finally, uh, the design elements of vertical facilitation. And part of the, the thing here is that um, we are looking at the activity of vertical facilitation and the design aspects of vertical facilitation. But before we do that, we want to know, like, so we've just stated our intention. What is your intention for this program, however you relate to this program? And um, we want to offer you just, we're not going to take a lot of time for this, um, but what is it that brings you to this journey? You know, something you could say in a, a phrase. And we'll invite you to take a couple minutes, maybe to write that down, drop that down for you to hold uh, uh, for this. We find that. Um, to the degree that we can hold an, int an intention, um, it actually um, amplifies and, and empowers our learning. So just give you a couple of minutes to do that.
some of you may already be doing this, you might actually type uh, your intention in the chat. There's something very powerful that happens in a vertical learning environment when people actually share somewhat personal things like that with others. This is about you starting to get in touch with your bigger game related to the initial thing that had you show up here, yeah. which yeah. is also an aspect of a vertical learning environment. Great. Love seeing these come in. So let's hear a couple human voices. It's yeah. always nice to hear some human voices. Maybe you just want to say exactly what you just put in the chat. It doesn't have to be a long story. Maybe two or three of you will just unmute yourself and, and share with us your answer to the question, what brings you to this learning journey? And know also uh, that we will not be interacting with you at this point. Um, yeah, we just want to hear. We want to hear what's brewing out there. And I bet you other people want to hear too. Yeah. Cool. Hi hey everyone, it's Kevin here from Sydney. Good evening to all those in the southern end of the world. Um, for me, um, I, I, I read the I read the white paper. There was lots of things in there that um, I guess I felt, uh, but I never really had some good language to put around it. So that's what's what's brought me here today. Uh huh. Um yeah, okay, and I promise not to <laughs> you promise you promised not to interrupt. But hi, Kevin. Okay, I got it. Thanks for thanks for thanks for holding down the fort there in the southern hemisphere, presenting, yeah. representing, and uh thanks for <laughs> letting us hear you. Yeah, thanks. One or two more. <laughs> yeah, so uh hello from uh, Amsterdam here. <clears throat> Actually currently at a conference, so I still took liberty to, to sneak out of all the uh, exciting talks uh, because this was very important to me. I've been following Lisa Atkins for uh, a little while now and uh, always found the videos uh, very interesting. So as I also said in the comments, sometimes you just need to jump on that bandwagon and see where it's at. Uh, reading the, uh, the actual paper has got me really interested, also curious as to as far as I was able to, to get exactly what was, uh, what was being uh, shared there. Um, but what I took from that is at least becoming aware of, of what type of lenses we look at the world and what if I'm able to actually uh, understand what somebody else's lens is, if that's already a possibility, then what do I do with that? So that was that was what piqued my interest. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, great. That sounds good. Sounds good to hear a few voices. Um, do do check out what's in the chat. There's lots of richness in there about what is bringing people here. Gorgeous. Oh, let's hear from one more person. Um, I can give my thoughts. Uh, this is Susil Bodichan. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I think one of the challenges I see in organization is primarily we tell people, you know, like be as a think as a, you know, have an as a mindset, but how? Um, so I think that's a really challenge. So I hope to get more out of this session and and I tried um, utilizing some of the other techniques and did it right things but definitely would love to learn from masters so yeah thank you I want to hear so many more voices Lisa and <laughs> we do need to we need to move on um, yep. thank you uh, for those of you who just shared and uh, for mm -hmm. all uh, also in the in the chat thank you yeah yeah. Gorgeous. All right. So let's dive into some concepts. Um, pay attention because once we get through this piece, we're going to be asking you to be in a small group conversation mm. where you're making sense of what you just heard, but you're also trying to use the concepts in real time at the same time, and you're totally up for it. 
So be listening with that lens or with that possibility. Great. So, um, so we want to start with a couple of definitions and don't worry about this all making sense at this point. Right now, um, there are a couple of different ways that we use language in vertical facilitation. One is a way to describe something and one and another is a way to orient something, to create something. And so you can think of these definitions as orienting and uh, as orienting, it doesn't necessarily make complete sense, but it'll make a lot more sense as we proceed. And the, the first definition is vertical facilitation, which we define as a manner of leaderfully interacting with others, usually over the course of some time, in ways that deliberately catalyze vertical learning, or you could say transformative learning, all right? So let's say something about vertical learning which we regard as a form of learning in which there's a transformation in how people make sense of their world. So we're gonna unpack elements of these definitions as we proceed. So there are two aspects to this. One aspect is the activity of vertical facilitation, what we're actually doing in real time. And then the other aspect is the design, like how do we create environments that inspire, empower, and enable uh, um, vertical learning. So those are the two aspects, and we're going to be we're going to take each of these um, uh, um, in this in this webinar, and they're kind of the basis for the whole uh, for this whole work. So, the activity of vertical facilitation. So it starts with sensing. It all starts with sensing what we're aware of, what we pay attention to. And this, by the way, is derived from the book Coactive Coaching uh, from Henry and Karen Kimsey House. And Lisa and I have both been exposed to their work. So uh, we've seen this model. Um, so you're sensing. So all there is is sensing. You stay with sensing. And we'll say what we're sensing in just a moment, but basically you're in this mode of sensing. And at some point among the things you're sensing is what's going on in you as a facilitator. And at some point you experience an urge towards some action and you take that action, but you do it with full permission. You know how sometimes we're kind of like, I don't know if I should do this. and and um, but. This is taking action with full permission, but also with a commitment to clean up whatever mess it might make, because it may not always be right. And that's not the point, right? The point is, is that we're acting, we're sensing, and at some point we act, and then we go back into sensing mode. So it's a little bit like a turtle, you know? <laughs> the turtle is in the shell all the time. Every once in a while, it pops its head out, sticks its tongue out, and goes back in. And this is kind of like you, except... Rather than being in your shell, you're out of your shell. And every once in a while, you take some action. And then you go back to sensing. So the question then, or there are really two primary questions, they're kind of two pieces of, a, of the same question. What are we looking at? You know, so if I'm in this room, I'm sitting in this room, and right now I'm looking at this screen, but I might turn and I might look at this room, or I might look out the window you know, at the trees and what, ha what have you outside my window. Those are the things I'm looking at. And then there are the things that we're looking for. Like I might look out the window to, and I'm looking for my dog because she went, she went off someplace, right? So there are the things, what, there's what we're looking at and there's what we're looking for. And so let's start with what we're looking at. So what we're looking at, so we're, when we talk about vertical facilitation and vertical learning, in, in this program, we talk about it in terms of groups and teams, right? So that's the context. You can actually expand that out into the whole organization, but that's a whole other kind of thing. But one of the things that we're looking at are individuals. So for instance, I can't see very many of you, but I'm, I'm looking at individuals. And you're probably looking at, at individuals on your screen. And then as things proceed, 
You're also looking at interrelations, which is the interactions that people are having and the manner in which people are relating with each other. So that's yet another thing you're paying attention to, you're looking at, right? You're also sensing the field, like right now it's a little hard to sense the field here, but if I weren't in share screen mode, I could see more of you, right? We're always able to sense the field in any sort of social environment and we can attune ourselves to sense more powerfully. We're also looking at the content. So in any given vertical facilitation uh, context, there's, some, there's typically some kind of content, even if it's a, a very minimal content, content, like for instance, when we're say working with leadership teams, right? And we're coaching them or working with them. And then finally, there's our self, that meaning making that is me in this moment. So those are the things that we're looking at at any given moment. So remember, we're, we're sensing, we're sensing, we're staying and sensing. Every once in a while, we feel an urge, we take an action and we move back into sensing. And when we're sensing, this, this is what we're sensing. It's kind of like the meters on an airplane cockpit, right? So I always like to look inside the airplane cockpit. I'm fascinated by all these meters and dials. And you've got to pay attention to all of these. So you might actually start to do that now, like paying attention to everything. It's a little hard. This is a somewhat strange um, uh, moment. This is not exactly vertical facilitation we're doing here. Okay, so that's what we're looking at. What we're looking for. So we're looking at these five sort of aspects or phenomena, right? And one of the things that we're looking for with respect is respect to individuals. So we're looking for like areas of stuckness and in, in a given, any given individual, where might they be stuck? Something about their manner of speaking, their manner of action, something might feel a little stuck, or maybe there's a resourcefulness there or or an openness, or maybe there's a lack of openness. And, you know, obviously it ebbs, these things ebb and flow. But these, by the way, this is in no way exhaustive, but th these are just sort of like, you know, impressionistic sort of um, um, pieces. But most of what we're looking for is our like evidence of their meaning making. How is this person making meaning? With respect to interrelations, the things we're looking for have to do with what's the degree of positivity into interrelations, you know, the interactions and the sense of relationship between and among people. What, what are the avoidances? So oftentimes the way that we relate with each other, there, tend, there can be things that we're avoiding, things that we're not saying or, or topics that we avoid. And you can always feel that sense of avoidances. You can see it very much in the interrelations. And these are the things that you're looking for. You're also looking for the kind of the nature of the interaction patterns. And again, there are many other things that, that, that we're looking for, but these are sort of, you know, um, uh, some of them. The in terms of the field, like which is the, it's a kind of like the emotional energy field of this system, of this group, of this team of, in this moment. Among the things that we're looking for is what's the quality of energy? You know, the, is it sleepy? Is it alive? What's the tone? Is it, is, is there a sense of like positivity in the field? Is there a sense of openness, a sense of possibility, or is it shut down? And, and again, these things all ebb and flow, and we're paying attention to that ebb and flow without getting overly fixed that it's one way or another. Is there congruence in the field? You know, does it seem as though um, there's congruence within the system among the people within the system, but is there congruence in terms of, you know, like, there's a, there's a quality of feeling in, in the field, but at the same time, there's this other quality of feeling and they seem kind of incongruent. And between interrelations and the field, we're also, we're paying attention to uh, the shared meaning making. Content. So 
we're looking uh, in terms of the content, we're looking for is it coherent? How is this landing? What's it activating with this group? So these are the kinds of things we're paying attention to with respect to content. And then in terms of self. So we're also paying attention to what's going on in me. So am I present or am I not present? You know, so, and it, again, it comes and goes, like I'm noticing for myself, there are, there are moments when I'm present, there's moments when I'm not. And so paying attention to that kind of presence meter, awareness and courage, you know, am I aware Am I able to be aware of all of these dials, all of these aspects, you know, or am I getting fixated on individuals or fixated on content and compassion, right? Do I have cur the courage to be able to speak to something that I can sense? I'm, am I, do I have the courage to follow an urge with an action with full permission and a commitment to clean up whatever mess it might make and compassion. Do I have compassion for myself for what's whatever it is that's going on here and ultimately paying attention to my own meaning making. And so ultimately it's this meaning making that we're paying attention to. And we haven't said much about meaning making uh, yet. We will in a moment. And even then we won't say a lot. We'll say more next time. So, um, so that's, those are all the things that we're looking for. Um, I'm just aware that um, I emailed handouts and um, I probably want to put them into the um, chat uh, in case people haven't gotten them. Um, so Lisa, do you want to set this up while I uh, get these things into the chat? Yeah, great. Um, so we want you to start making a little bit of sense about what you've just heard. Now, you're coming from lots of different, con different contexts. Some of you might be in long-term engagements on clients and you're, you're noticing the need to bring in more of an adult development or vertical learning aspect to that. Maybe some of you were doing like, like a longitudinal leadership development programs. Maybe some of you were teaching coaching classes or something else. Whatever your context is, we're wanting you to start think about starting to think about these models and what you're seeing through them. And also, we'll also put these two prompts in the chat to support you. Also, while that conversation is going on, you're going to be in groups of four to five people. So while that's going on, have a little bit of your mind paying attention to um how well you can start to activate the model that you're talking about at the same time yeah and we get it that's a lot of that's a lot of layers but you're up for it so pay attention to um just a little bit of you pay attention to the interactions and the energy of the small group and all that sort of thing and michael is also putting in the uh into the chat now these models so that you'll be able to refer to them as you have this conversation. It's a short conversation, everyone. It's seven minutes with a 30 second countdown. Um, it's just to start to get your feet wet with these with these concepts. Yeah, and again, and, and be paying attention, reserve part of your, again, you're, you're acting as a kind of vertical facilitator here. You're gonna be scanning the whole field as you're doing this work. So mm -hmm. see what you see. Great. Okay. Um, I'm assuming that everything got into the yeah uh, yeah. And, uh, so everyone's downloading that little um, PDF. They've got the questions. We're about to open the rooms, everyone. You're going to be in groups of four to five. So here we go for seven minutes. Bye.
I'm going to pause the recording. Welcome back as you're coming back from your breakout. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back to the main room, everyone, as you're coming back from your breakout. Mm -hmm. We hope it was good that you got to see some other people who are interested in this topic. Was that good? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. seeing some head nods, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely good to get a sense of what other people are also thinking about the course itself and, you know, where you want to go with this course. So that was really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. great. Yeah. Good, good. yeah. So so we're in that tension that we mentioned before. And if we had a lot of time to debrief it, we would debrief both the, the content of your conversation, but all, and also the process. But we're now we're really interested in the process. Like, what was it like for you? you know, to, to be in this group? What were some of the, you know, the things that you noticed? And um, were you able to pay attention to some of those um, different um, parts of what was going on? Or where maybe there was some place where you got kind of where most or all of your attention went to. So let's, let's hear from some of you on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, first of all, time was not enough, Michael. Seven of course minutes. not. Lisa, it was not, yeah, hi, hi. Hi. Yeah, we, we just realized by talking, by trying to apply the process, hey, we are from different parts of the world, different fields, having different prof professions. And yeah, what we have, or what I sense is uh, lots of curiosity. Oh, what's happening? What will happen? What we will learn? What's the difference of this vertical facilitation from other tools or techniques? Yeah, uh, and curiosity, some kind of, yeah, looking for new, yeah, looking for new things and eagerness to learn that these are the things that I realize or I sense, yeah. Yeah, so, so I wanna, um, I'm, I'm gonna wanna be just slightly provocative and, um, and I wanna invite us to notice when we're using language to describe our experiences that is all that's already familiar for us, like categories of language, and um, because um, <clears throat> this is about being present with what's going on around us, and um, uh, so I'm going to invite us to like be more specific. Like, what did we? What was it like for me to be in this group? Or what was what were the group dynamics, or what was the what were the interrelations like? And just or even just like I didn't even notice any of that stuff. I was so you know intent on the content. Yeah, and to support us in this, I just put in the chat like the five dials that you're looking at. Yes, you know, yeah. like that you have running in the back of your mind as you are interacting with and watching a group interact both at the same time. Yeah, and so. You know, what I heard um, you say just a moment ago is that that you were paying attention to, I don't know that you were doing this consciously, mm -hmm. but unconsciously paying attention to a little bit of the field. What, what does it feel like for us to come together, to start to share our different backgrounds, where we come from, start to make sense of this together, a little bit of that aspect. Yeah. And, so, right. um, and so I would invite you and everyone as you think about this, you know, what of these five things what just slipped your notice completely? Yeah. <laughs> you know, what did you not pay attention to? Or what did you pay like too much attention to? <laughs> exactly. And not like bad or wrong. It's just kind of noticing yeah. because, you know, this is like, this is a lifelong project to learn how to do this. I'm still a student, you know, in this. Oh gosh, yes. Yeah. And we've been leading programs like this for, you know, probably close to a decade and we're still students of this, right? So, so yeah, let's hear another, let's hear another group, a person come in and just start to, start to shape what you were looking at and what you were looking for in this language of these five different things to look at. Right, and somebody had their hand up a moment, hand raised. Yeah, a was it Frederick yeah. maybe, I think. Yeah, Frederick. Feel yeah. free to come in if you want to. Um, I don't know if I'll follow your format, so that's why I, I lowered my hand. <laughs> so, but trying to, trying to jump into what you, you said, I think I was very much into myself um, I, and focused on 
um, what my two group mates knew about this domain because um, guilty as charged, I've not read Evolve Agility yet. So it's gonna be in my, in my book list now, but I, I was not familiar with vertical learning. And so I had this question and I didn't ask it in the small group. So I'll ask it here. Amaranato Robe once shared a, a sentence with me that I have in my room. It's uh, your awareness, your attention gets in the way of your awareness. And so where I'm struggling right now is that putting my attention on something, looking for in a way something, I wonder how this is balancing against uh, receiving and mm -hmm. that's it. And so mm -hmm. one tiny element about that, I spent hundreds of hours in the cockpit with pilots and I realized I never asked them and I will um, how they do to actually do that, to, to balance this awareness and this uh, attention. So my husband's a private pilot and mm -hmm. he has told me how they do it. They are <laughs> taught to scan every dial within 10 seconds. And so there's like, there's a heuristic about how often you scan all the dials and how mm -hmm. fast you're able to do it. And so like he has practiced being able to do it pretty quickly. And so mm -hmm. this is the thing about attention or awareness. Like at any, as I'm scanning those dials, I'm obviously putting my attention on those dials. My open awareness is maybe not as mm -hmm. open and maybe not as receptive this, in this very moment, but I'm scanning quickly. And if one of those dials gets my attention, like, oh, we got to pay attention to that then I'm going to focus on that, bring my full attention to that for a bit. Maybe my open awareness is still here, but not so much in my fore, fore, forebrain, right? Yeah. And then when I can relax my attention, I can go back to more open awareness. Yeah. Now, what, you, what you say makes a lot of sense in particular because a lot of pilots prefer analog dials rather than absolutely people, they're faster to read because they just see the incline <clears throat> they don't need to focus on the number yeah that's yeah. right yeah. yeah and and just and just to build on what lisa's saying and something that we will do a lot of work with in the deep dive is that's part of the art of it which mm -hmm. is to be able to give mm -hmm. because what you're really talking to is that you could give attention to your awareness mm -hmm. right so yeah. and a big part of vertical facilitation is developing that sort of meditation practice of being able to be aware of your awareness to be aware mm -hmm. of that which is giving attention. And that's it's a very powerful way to be able to move back and forth in the various foreground, background fields that you're working with. Mm -hmm. And so, like for instance, you might be um, working with someone individually within a group. You might be doing live coaching with somebody in a group, but, you, but you're always scanning, you're always sensing the yep. field, which you don't even have to look necessarily, you can feel it, but you're also scanning the other individuals and the, you know, you're, you're, all of that, your pain, mm -hmm. so so you can have focus, but it's kind of like a nail with a wide um, head, you know, so that there's the focus, but you're also being able to see the whole totality as well. Thank yeah, you. nice. And yeah. it gets easier over time. It gets more, more fluid yeah. over time. Yeah. And, it, and it gets more of both. It gets more of attention and awareness over time. That's my experience of it. Yes, that's right. And, and here's the thing too. I'm noticing that we've just been drawn into content. So we've been given a lot of, attention mm -hmm. to content, right, in, in in our interaction with you. And you had said something at the very beginning about what your experience was like. And, like, and honestly, I forget what it was. We don't have to go back to that. But I just yeah. want to call attention to what happens. Yep. Because, uh, you know, in, in the work of vertical facilitation, we're always making choices in the moment. Do we go yeah. in with this individual? Do we hold the whole group right. equal? Right. What do we do, basically, right? Yeah. So now we're going to pop out of that and here are some more voices yeah mm. thanks frederick yeah so yep. shashil come on in unmute yourself and what was what were you paying attention to what did you notice in that conversation yeah i think it made me more intentional first of all just because we talked about it and i was looking at the especially energy on the other individuals and for myself, <clears throat> I kind of slow down uh, and not have that urge to answer something, right? I think mm. that was a really great, um, great achievement, right? Just just being intentional within just just few minutes that you guys bring up this topic. So uh, I think that's that that is very powerful, uh, especially as a coach. 
you know, when they say something, we like to jump in and say, hey, here it is. Here it is. And, and not give enough time to mm-hmm. listen to them and truly understand them. So I think it was really helpful to become that intentional. But, you know, I think it will definitely improve over the time. But I did not probably pay attention to all the things that, that we talk about, but at least few of those things. So yeah. I, I think that was a really great experience, honestly. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you for that sharing. Um, and I, what I appreciate about that sharing, Shushil, is that, you know, I actually was there with you. So it had this quality of, of like sharing has this quality of, of bringing others on board emotionally with that which you're sharing. So it's very, very, very mm-hmm. nice. I'm also was aware of how much I was taken by you in, uh, as, as an individual and again, it's one of those moments where, you know, sometimes I can be really drawn into individuals and forget to pay attention to like the field. Um, so mm-hmm. great. Nice. Good, tea. good noticing. All right. Very nice. T. This, yeah, this is Ty. It's Ty. Hi, yeah. hi, Ty. Hi. Um, so yeah, I, it, I was in a, a group of two others. And what I noticed from myself anyway, is when I joined Um, They, they know each other from uh, previous working relationships. And so I immediately got a little nervous that I was going to be an outsider and have a hard time um, chiming in or, or, or fitting in, but the positivity that they um, shared and, and the openness was very welcoming and it actually was quite easy. I found that we quickly, or at least again, from my own perspective, quickly connected around the content and um, talking about the turtle metaphor and and that allowed us to have something to really um, connect on and that that helped bring me in uh, oh. from a relationship perspective there. So I, I, I thought that was pretty interesting how that played out. Yeah, great. And, and your articulation, Pai, um, it reminds me that there's a dynamic aspect to this. So like, what we've articulated in the model so far is a, is a, the static aspect, the 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 you know the um, structure aspect, but there's also a process aspect which we haven't even touched on, right? Um, which is the unfolding of what's happening in 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 groups. So beautiful, thank you for that. Yeah. I want to make a little um, connection to the that first model. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, the one that was a circle. That yeah. says what yeah. you do. You as a as a person yeah. doing vertical facilitation, you might have an urge, mm-hmm. and Ty, you had that from from yourself, from your internal experience. You had the urge of, oh my gosh, am I going to be an outsider here? And and the way that it worked out for you is that you were able to join them in content. But as a, a leader of vertical facilitation, someone bringing this angle into their work, you always have that question of, should I follow this urge? And say something about that. Is that the best way to yeah. actually interact with this group right now? So what it might have sounded like is even maybe just a, a little um, slight nervousness. I mean, I might, I might have said, if I were you, Ty, I might have said, wow, so you all know each other. I'm a little nervous about how to get in here. Yeah. Yeah. And that, of course, would have completely shaped, reshaped the the uh, the what happened next in the group. Now, there's no right or wrong. You know, no good, better, best here. There are just uh, interventions you try and then you stick around to clean up <laughs> if it doesn't go as well as you wanted, basically. <laughs> yeah, and, and even like, you know, um, when you feel the urge, you know, the question you want to consider is, you know, is this urge for the benefit of the present moment or is it for the benefit of something in me that has a need? And so there's always that, again, that awareness of our awareness, awareness of that from which that urge springs, and and then being able to be choiceful uh, with that awareness, uh, given that awareness. Beautiful. Yeah, so great. let's pick up what Vikram wants to say, and then we want to um, move into some more design elements of this. Yeah. Go ahead, Vikram. Thanks, Lisa. Uh, so when I got into the room, um, there were I think there were three elements that was driving my actions. And I say actions deliberately because uh, that sort of made me do something which I wouldn't have done otherwise uh, in retrospect now. 
uh, the first one was there was a pressure of time so I could see the clock ticking and the second element was because it was a smaller group we 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 started to introduce ourselves and when we when we introduced ourselves I think my my attention shifted from the introductions or the dynamics uh, to the next order of business, right? So it was like we we introduced ourselves and we were we were silenced and there was a there was a bit of a silence that was that was there which I constructed as a, an uncomfortable silence. So because it was uncomfortable, not maybe perhaps not for the group but for my own self, was I was I really comfortable with that silence after the after the mandatory introductions? Uh, I, I started to drive the conversation, saying that now as a group, perhaps we need to sort of get down to the business of, of what, what it is, right? Uh, so was I facilitating that? No, I think I assumed the role of someone who would sort of lead or shepherd the group, uh, saying that maybe we need to answer these two questions. Maybe we need to answer these three questions. Uh, but at that point of time, um, because I have facilitated so far, and I, I, I sort of preserve and, and and cherish the 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 way of staying in the uncomfortable silence i felt uncomfortable doing that uh, at which i could not place my words towards it and now when we start listening to others now i don't have the urge to speak i don't have the urge of the time i can now stay back more relaxed and sort of reflect upon myself as to what i did and i can i can i can now I, and i'm more comfortable than what i was before i mean those mm -hmm. were some of the observations what i had I, I love I love it because you know for ev for each one of us there are going to be things that that drive our behavior right and so you're noticing some of those for you the time the desire to get on with the task you know the, to do well in some sense right yeah and so that this is why we're so looking forward to doing the deep dive with however many of you want to come and we're going to do it in small batches like you know you know a dozen or so people because we want to really be able to help the individuals break down whatever are those internal things that they don't need anymore that actually hamper or or constrict what's possible in groups especially when you're trying to help groups face the edge of their own meeting making face yeah. where their own ways of working with the complex world are not complex enough you know and so that that's a that's a very dicey place to stand you know with a group and so I just, I love that you're already onto yourself about, about what might get in your way. <laughs> and yeah, it, it takes one to know one. I, I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> the, the other thing I would say, Vikram, is um, uh, one of the things that we will get into in the deep dive is becoming more aware of our impact. And um, when we, when, whenever we speak or take action, you know, in groups, you know, whether we are a participant or, the, or a facilitator. And, um, you know, over the years, I've watched countless videos of, you know, courses and workshops and program sessions that I've led. And, you know, um, to, to find out, get a sense of what's, what's the impact. And um, we, we often really don't know what our impact is. And, um, and that's an important part of, of, of this. Yeah, nice, so nice. All right, so we're going to take a, a turn from that. You might actually move your body a bit, uh, get ready for a little more conceptual information to come your way. Michael's going to share some slides again. We're going to talk about the design elements, like what uh, vertical learning and design elements, what do you need to design to create such an environment? Yeah, so let's, so we're going to start with just go, going back to the question of what is vertical learning? And we're just going to touch on it here, just enough to give us some language to go into the design conversation. So um, according to adult development theory, and many of you have probably already seen this, Sabina, I see your hand raised. Do I want to respond to that? You can help us decide, Sabina. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say I love this session. Oh. That was worth stopping for. Thank, thank you. Good. Thank was. you. Yeah. Anyone else get a boost from that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kevin did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Really beautiful. Thank you for that, Sabina. That's great. Okay. So two dimensions. So this is directly out of adult developmental theory. So 
there are many sources of uh, you know uh, traditions, research traditions, and other traditions that inform this work. And one of them, of course, is adult developmental theory. And so, two learning dimensions. One is they refer to as horizontal, which refers to skills and competencies and abilities. So these are things for which we or that with respect to which we ordinarily associate training. All right. So we you know we we, we get you know, we get trained in nonviolent communication, for instance, or we get trained in, you know, you know, emergent organizational design or whatever it is, you know, whatever the thing is that we're learning about, it increases our skills, competencies, and abilities, and also our know-how, our knowledge, right? There's a different dimension, though, um, it, which is what they refer to as vertical dimension. And the vertical dimension um, refers to our capacity for awareness. So someone brought up the, the topic of awareness, understanding like how we understand what's going on and the perspectives. What are the, what are the kinds of perspectives that I am able to hold or that this group is able to hold? And all of this folds under the umbrella term of meaning making or um, we often use the term sense making, sort of somewhat interchangeably with meaning making. And meaning making, it's something that is happening all the time. It's like a machinery, a machine that's going on literally constantly. And it determines how we come to make sense of the world and hence determines what skills, competencies, and abilities we can actually develop. So, for instance, you might have an eight-year-old or a seven-year-old child who is learning programming, but they will not likely be able to develop complex software systems on the order, say, of an operating system, right? Because what's missing is something that exists vertically. There's a vertical dimension in how they're able to make sense of things that just isn't on board yet. So that's why they called it vertical. It goes as it goes up higher and higher. It makes possible a, a broader and broader range of, of of horizontal abilities and competencies, and ultimately of, of actions. Okay. So so coming back to the definition of vertical learning, then, and we're, we're going to unpack all that stuff we just introduced um, in the next session. Um, Vertical learning is a form of learning in which there's a shift in how people make sense of their world. So it's just restating what we said a moment ago. But to elaborate a bit more, vertical learning has happened when people are being and acting in ways that are more generative, resourceful, and capable. So they may not even necessarily be able to name what has shifted, but they can tell that something has shifted because they find themselves, for instance, the situations and people that used to be challenging are less challenging. And it's often surprising for people. And so there's a transformative nature to vertical, when vertical learning has happened. And when vertical learning has happened, people find themselves better able to deal with inherent complexity around them. Just letting that kind of settle for a moment. Horizontal learning generates new skills, competencies, and know-how, which is really important. That's probably, you know, the, the biggest factor in our ability for effective action, right? Vertical learning, however, generates shifts in how people see and operate within the world. So vertical facilitation, it's not like it's it, it's not like as though it's devoid of horizontal learning, but the primary focus is on facilitating vertical learning. Okay, so now we can start to talk about this final piece, which are the, mm, we have different terms for this, deliberate, sometimes we call it deliberately developmental environment, sometimes we call it deliberate vertical learning environment, but but this, so there's certain design parameters uh, for this, for creating, because it is about creating an environment. So a vertical shift doesn't happen through instruction. It's not to poo-poo instruction, right? Or the various training vehicles that are kind of like instruction, right? Um, but 
vertical shifts don't happen solely by that. Vertical shift is a much more ecosystemic uh, phenomenon that happens when we shape a particular kind of learning environment. So this, this photo of the children, they're doing some sort of science experiment, right? And they have all different kinds of things and they're sitting outside and they're working together and someone's taking notes and there's all kinds of things happening in the environment that provides for not just horizontal learning, but also vertical learning, something, some kind of shift that happens over, over time. And um, so the question then is, what's the nature of such a learning environment? And so we're gonna briefly introduce this, right? We'll, in the deep dive, we get much more into it. Like uh, actually, how do you, what are the mechanics? What are the, what are the creative pursuit by which we create such an environment? But this ultimately points back to the notion of a holding environment that came, comes from Donald Winnicott and Robert Keegan, for those of you who would like to geek out on this kind of stuff. Um, and there are three elements of this holding environment. So a holding environment is a deliberately developmental environment that brings about vertical learning. And the first element is psychological support. So there's gotta be an element in which people are supported in taking the kinds of risks that are needed for vertical learning to happen. And the second, second piece is psychological challenge. Notice we use the word psychological, right? Because ultimately this, is, this work occurs, you could say within the psychological domain. And challenge is just that something in us gets stretched. Some aspect of our meaning making gets stretched. And we often experience that as a st stress or anxiety or sometimes exhilaration, although not often. <laughs> And then finally, learning tools, learning tools that are designed specifically to um, catalyze this thing that we're calling vertical learning. Okay, so let's move on to kind of the second part or the second dimension or the second piece of this, of this model or this framework that's at the kind of the backbone of all of this, which um, and there are four meta design elements. So this basically extrapolates off of, um, how are we doing, Lisa? We're doing great, but I just wanna just want to invite people to, as you do this next piece, especially, to be thinking about where have you perhaps already experienced an environment that has this element he's talking about? Because undoubtedly throughout all the various things you've done in your life, you've experienced at least some of these elements and maybe even all of them. So start to ground them in your own first person experience. Absolutely. And that, and that raises an important point that um, I wouldn't say that any of this is stuff that we invented. It's mm -hmm. more like we observed lots and lots and lots of instances in which vertical learning was happening, whether it was us facilitating it or us you know, actually being seeing in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Us being the participants yeah, in it. <laughs> exactly. yeah. yeah. And, and, and so, and, and just starting to see what are the patterns and, and there's a kind of a pattern language to this. And so ultimately this is about exercising a kind of pattern language um, that has been around really probably for eons. You know, if you, if you look at the great spiritual traditions and the sanghas, you know, um, this kind of stuff has always happened, right? Great, you know, spiritual retreats and, and um, all have these elements to them. And the, the first element is what we call heat experiences. And a heat experience is an experience that um, brings about um, an uncomfortable sense for somebody or a group that the way in which they're making sense of things isn't going to um, deliver on what it is that they're dealing with, as you need to say that very colloquially, right? There's a phrase often associated with this, which is the term disorienting dilemmas. And this comes from a the field of transformative learning. And a disorienting dilemma is simply, it's an internal sense-making dilemma in which we have a, it, we have a very felt sense that the way in which we're making meaning of a given situation 
is not sufficient for the situation, and yet we're not quite sure what would be. And so we're in this sort of gap, and it feels like a dilemma, and it's oftentimes uncomfortable. So heat experiences, hence the word heat. Okay. Stretch practices. So they're a little bit like heat experiences, except these are practices that we introduce that have the effect of bringing people to a different kind of awareness, or maybe being able to step into a new perspective. Like for instance, Lisa, I think of the, the great example of, uh, was that the afternoon of day one of coaching agile teams? Some of you may have um, may uh, remember this course that Lisa and Michael Spade and I used to teach uh, uh, coaching agile teams. And at one point we invite people to practice what we call level two listening. And, um, and what happens when people practice this is at first, it feels very strange, but as they practice it, um, it helps, it, it introduces a different sort of perspective uh, for them. Suddenly they realize that maybe this, their habit of wanting to give advice all the time is not necessarily the best thing. And so for many people, that's like an aha. So, it's a, so, those, so that's an example of a stretch practice. And the stretch practice also is something that you can practice to get better at that thing that you are getting stretched in. Exactly. So it's, that's how it's related to a disorienting dilemma. Disorienting dilemma is like, whoa, hang on. Beyond here, I don't know exactly what to do. And a stretch practice is, oh, okay, this is one little way I can start to enter that territory. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of like it kind of like building the new, um, uh, the new frame that the disorienting dilemma is wanting. Uh, piece by piece through the introduction of stretch practices. Yeah. So these are all, you know, these are all of a synthetic whole, right? Um, the next uh, element is the social container. So this work works in groups. This is not a one-on-one -on -one coaching paradigm. This is a group, uh, in any kind of group situation. And so we want to activate the social container. So a lot of it is about, this is why we wanna pay attention to interrelations and, and, um, and, the, um, and the field. And the field, we wanna be attentive to these things because those are the things that we're tuning as well, right? And the social container, when the social container is powerfully um, developmental or when, it's, when it facilitates vertical development, it happens, it happens, it's a little bit, I, I hate to use this metaphor, uh, but it comes from this guy named Edgar Schein. And he used to talk about how people, survivors of prisoner of war camps, they have developed a very close relationship with one another. And um, and it's not, not to compare vertical facilitation with a prisoner of war camp, but, but, but people experience moments of discomfort. And when that happens within a social container, it actually makes it possible for people to experience greater sense of psychological support as they endeavor to uh, engage in psychological challenges. And there are many other things that happen with the social container as well. And then finally, the bigger game, which Lisa alluded to at the very beginning. And the bigger game is really like, um, it, you know, there's the, the thing that we are here to do as a group but then there's like the bigger game, like what is it that, what's the bigger context that holds what we're doing, that expands the range of commitment into which we might live. So for instance, we invited you all to actually look at what might be an intention that you would hold, something that in a sense holds, that gives a context for what we're doing, that empowers that context, and it has it has the effect in a sense of amplifying all of the other elements here and all of the elements. <laughs> My puppy is digging a hole to China here. I don't know if you can see her. <laughs> <laughs> She's in the field. She's in the probably field. Other, probably other people are feeling like that too. Like, can I just turn around so I, I get comfortable enough to lay back down again, please? <laughs> <laughs> Good. All right. Well, cool. So, um, I, I'm feeling like I just want to leave it at this for, for now. And um, I don't know if we want to, maybe if we have time, maybe for a couple of questions or comments on this. Obviously, you know, we're opening up huge swatches 
here. And uh, we'll get into it a little bit more uh, in the next webinar. And then there'll be other materials that we'll provide. And of course, we go into all of this in great depth uh, in the deep dive. Mm -hmm. Right now, if there are any questions. I, I want to make a comment about how this group is doing. Yeah, so great. like, as I, as I think about a vertical facilitation lens for this group, there, have, there has been a lot of support that mm -hmm. has gone on in the chat. I'm spe mm -hmm. talking specifically about what I'm seeing in the chat. Lots of psychological support going on in the chat. There are a couple of psychological challenges that have come out in the chat. Mm -hmm. And people have been so far not interacting with them very much, which makes sense because we don't have yet a really uh, uh, juicy and reliable psychological support aspect in our group. And, and in these webinars, we probably never will. Because yeah. the intention is not necessarily to cohere as a group in these webinars, right? But when we get into the deep dive portion, like these sorts of things that are being brought up in, in chat now, bigger, much bigger issues that are very timely, those are the types of things that we can deal with and process as a group and learn at the same time. Yeah. So I think there's, uh, I just want to make that point that we're always having to be choiceful about which of these elements are we actually activating. And I think that's, for me, that's the most important thing about the vertical facilitator program is to help people become more conscious of what they're already doing. Yes. yes. Help them become more conscious of the places they're not looking at all. And that creates a limitation, not only for them, but for the group they're working with. Um, and, and then what stands in their way of adding those pieces in. You know, because usually there are internal things for all of us that stand in our way for adding in those additional lenses. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for saying all that. Because, I, I, you know, what I would say for myself and reflecting on all of this is that the biggest challenge is, is really in the domain of self. So going back to those five dials, it really comes back to, to the self. You know, mm -hmm. when I get thick, overly fixated on one of those other four dials, there's, there's um, nine times out of 10, there's something going on, some inner limitation, something that's hard for me to be with, or, or somebody says something and I get triggered and, and my ability to be present and aware gets kind of like shocked out uh, for, mm -hmm. for, for some period of time. And so a lot of this is about noticing when we get shocked, when we get triggered and being able to recover fairly quickly. Uh, to bring presence back, because when we lose presence, there's no presence, right? Without, I'm sorry, when we bring- Without presence, we don't get presence. I like that though. <laughs> well, <laughs> no what I meant to say, that's there. good. <laughs> <laughs> that's very good. And, and what I meant to say, without awareness, there's no awareness. It, uh, you know, if we're not aware of the awareness of what's going on, nobody is, right? And then it's like, and then it's like, like a sailboat and nobody is is managing the sails, and the and the sailboat will go someplace, and it might actually go where it needs to go, uh, by but it'll be surely by accident. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. So remember these like two major threads here. One thread is how to design environments for vertical facilitation. That's the stuff Michael has just talked about, mm -hmm. and the other is like in the act, mm -hmm. in the moment of vertical facilitation, paying attention to those dials, and in the center of all those dials is yourself, which is to your essentially the main instrument of your craft yes indeed indeed well we have a, maybe a couple minutes we're yeah gonna... let's hear let's hear some questions yeah. until about 25 minutes after the hour and then we'll start to yeah. wrap up <laughs> <laughs> all right i'm gonna who's got uh, who's got one perhaps a, a quick comment instead of a question oh um, yeah comments great brandon come on in. i've been thinking about what was present in the environment where I was a product owner, lived in agile transformation, and it got me into this work. And it wasn't necessarily practices or anything like that, but I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm like, yes, all of this was present. There was a secret sauce that led to this really actually transformative um, stretch of development, I think, for everybody involved. Uh, and it wasn't just harmony, right? There were challenging personalities that, that were in the mix that brought all of these elements to life and it i was trying to put my my finger on that to write about it as as a blog post uh and and this has just kind of turned all the lights on so thank you beautiful beautiful thank you for that and you know the thing that really sticks out for me and what you're saying is 
that um, <clears throat> you know part of the art of vertical facilitation is to be uncomfortable with discomfort. You know, in a sense, you know, groups are anxiety provoking environments. And to the degree that we as a facilitator can hold that anxiety, because that anxiety is, is not a product of individuals. It's an emergent property that, that uh, emerges in groups, right? And um, to the degree that we can hold that and allow for you know, behaviors that may not be um, comfortable to deal with, um, it makes possible something to emerge, something to happen that can't possibly otherwise happen, that just gets that just otherwise gets suppressed. And you know, the enemy of high performing groups and teams and systems in general, you know, is suppression, is is suppressed expressions. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, let's hear another voice, comment, um, insight, question. Push back. Come on, bring it on. I'm teasing. Kind of. <laughs> I have a question. Yeah, I have a question. Yeah. So, um, you know, when we think in the context of agile, we always say, um, you know, create teams around motivated individuals. Um, when we're working with groups, um, uh, we we see that there is disparity in uh, in in where we're coming from and how we're showing up in the conversation. And as a facilitator, uh, it becomes sort of you know, uh, my responsibility to make sure that I create an environment, facilitate the conversation in a way that's that brings learning uh, and awareness to the group. Um, but I, I, I think that's a really, really hard thing to do when there's disparity in where we stand in the vertical development scale. So the question that I that I have is, um, from a concept standpoint, this is this is so great and it truly deeply resonates with me and how uh, you know I see facilitation as a facilitator. But I get stuck on the fact that if if folks on 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 the team in the group are not you know even remotely close to each other um, on that scale, how does this work? So what I would say very briefly to that is consider that you have a certain way of making meaning of that. So you invented the word disparity. And um, so this would be a moment, if, if I may say so, if I may invite this, um, and I'm uh, perhaps being somewhat provocative here, but so much of it rides on our own meaning making. Like what are, what's the, what are the words that we use to describe what's going on? And th is that word of, it's not necessarily is that word an accurate description of what's going on, but more like, is it is it a sense-making frame that could be of value here? Or is there some way in which that sense-making frame may be constraining how I am looking at this? Felt that felt like that went like a lead balloon. <laughs> Actually, how how it went in me is like, oh, hang on, I got to think about that for a second. How'd it go for you, Supreet? Yeah. Um, yeah, it makes sense. Um, it makes sense, not but, and um, I'm looking forward to see how I can work with that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I think part of the answer, um, at least more of the tools that you're going to get is more language around those different levels of adult development. And in this program, we're using um, an adult development theory that's not that has not been used as much in um, the business world so far. So I, and I think it's quite robust, actually. Um, and it's something that Michael introduced me to. So yeah, so stay tuned for that. And then also, I would say about this is that the whole, the whole context we're in together is, can you make your work more, I'll say formal? Can you bring to the things you're already doing, the programs you're already doing, the teaching or training you're already doing, all of that. Can you bring to that these models to make the possibility of vertical facilitation and vertical development for everyone more possible? right? No, sort of no matter where they're starting from. What this is not 
is a diagnostic for trying to figure out why is something going wonky in this group right now when you don't have any container for this. Yeah. So in other words, like in the context of agile coaching, it doesn't, this, this could be interesting for you to try to apply to just, you know, like a daily interaction between people. But if the context of how people are interacting is only on a horizontal learning plane, then it's interesting, but you can't really activate much of it. Yeah, and the trick really here, and 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 bravo for what you, what you just brought in, because the trick is is that, you know, you you don't activate vertical learning directly. It's it's it's. I mean, that's something that we'll that we'll find as we go more deeply into this, that it's not like um, you can't catalyze transformative learning through the same methods by which you catalyze, say, horizontal learning, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, yeah. it's a very different methodology. And it's and it's it's done by through a kind of hinting or kind of like going out back behind people's already meaning making to try to mm -hmm. expose it so that people can examine the meaning making that de that determines how they think and how they act in order to become more choiceful and that's that's sort of the art of uh, of this mm -hmm. yeah i think yeah. what i will say one last piece of that is that modern ways of working that go against the predominant culture like agile like other things that are you know of the future of work kind of category do put people at the edge of their meaning making which is why there's such a big intersection between adult development and these modern ways of working so it, it it does put us all of us at the question of how could we bring more of this in consciously yeah 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 yeah, yeah. and and i think i just want to make one little single sentence to this is that we consider this work to be the leading edge of where agile is necessarily going um, I just saw recently a post from uh, Kent Beck, and he's been harping on this for a long time, actually, that the next edge for Agile is the inner development edge, you know, like creating spaces that facilitate inner development for people. Okay, Trey, yeah. you've got your hand up. Let's hear yeah. it. And then, and then, and then we're going to move to the last little bit we're going to do before we uh, we'll be good. good. So I was looking at this, and these are good to see you. Um, this reminds me of creating a deliberately developmental environment. And yeah. so we're creating some of these pieces in there, but yeah. sometimes you can't create that deliberately developmental environment whenever not in that space, but it seems very similar. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 in fact, it, it is really similar. And um, I started thinking of the term of deliberately developmental environment um, and I think I must have seen it in the early days when uh, Keegan and Leahy brought this out back in like the early 2000s. And when they were, they wrote, I can't remember the name of that first book that they, that they wrote when they were talking about this. But um, <clears throat> so this is, this is kind of like the next generation of that, of, of it's, it's a more pointed, this is a more pointed uh, thing. And the, the notion of deliberately developmental environments is, is, kind of ap applicable to the, the larger organizational frame, which is an entirely different thing uh, that we're not doing here with, with, with this. Yeah. Is that? Yeah, go yeah ahead. let me add one more little piece in before Trey responds. The, another piece, Trey, is that this is from Michael's and my lived experience yes. um, leading these sorts of things and being participants in these sorts of things. Not only the work we did together, that you might be familiar with, but the many years of work Michael did prior to that in transformative education, vertical learning environments, vertical development environments. So um, this, it's by no means like the right way or the best way, or maybe someone else has a better model out there or whatever. But what I'm finding really useful about what Michael is doing is he's codifying what was mostly implicit to us um, and, um, and making it more palpable for more people to be able to use. Yeah. Yeah. Is that helpful? Yeah, thank you. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay, so we want to move to just one last piece, which is to say something a bit more about uh, the deep dive for those of you who are wondering if that's uh, up for you. We're not going to say a lot about it. We just want to give you a little bit more information. More information will be coming out next week. Um, 
and and I believe that the registration uh, should be open next week uh, as well uh, for those of you who are interested. Um, okay. Okay, so um, you're sharing now. Okay, great. I don't know why my laptop is suddenly very. It's slow. like super slow. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Right. So here's here's the the full course at a glance. So um, so there's part one, which is where we are now. So uh, um, the two webinars, and then there'll be some sort of a completion uh, sometime in late July, and of course there'll be some emails and some other materials that that we will share with you. Um, registration for the deep dive opens some at some point next week. And um, part two is the deep dive. And um, there's a deadline to register. Um, part of one of the things that you do in this uh, in the deep dive is that you'll do, uh, you will have a leadership development profile, uh, which is uh, uh, based on the, um, uh, the action logic uh, um, uh, <clears throat> um, um, developmental um, ideas that, that we'll be talking about in the program. So each person, each participant will have a leadership development profile, which will not only help them, you know, get a kind of a, a, some contribute to their own self awareness, um, but also give uh, people a more intimate um, um, uh, insight into the into the uh, adult developmental ideas here. So, deep dive begins on August fifteenth with it, which with a three hour commencement session. Then we move into the intensive, uh, and the intensive is. Three days, um, three you know, roughly five to six hour days. It is intensive, so um, you don't you want to plan on not doing anything else because there'll be homework and other kinds of activities outside of the, the sessions we'll be doing. Uh, there's uh, you will create for yourself a kind of a project in which you will design some sort of an intervention, whether it's a training. Or, or, or team or group coaching um, intervention where you bring these uh, practices to bear. You'll have a clinic and practicum where you'll be able to practice these things and get some feedback from us and from each other. And then finally, there's a completion session um, and the dates are given here. And then part, uh, it says part two, it should be part three. Part three is a post deep dive and there'll be follow-up resources and emails uh, um, you know, and probably an ongoing community. Each of these is uh, about, uh, we wanted to cap these at 12 people cohorts. So we may uh, um, need to launch multiple cohorts, um, uh, um, but we won't, we won't go more than uh, 12 people just to um, have a, a good learning environment. Any questions on that? Whoops, we're just, we've just gone past our time, I realize. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah. So you I'll send out the post-session activity. I'll send this out uh, in a separate email, uh, but just to know this is an invitation for you. Yeah, okay. sounds good. And if people do have questions about this program, Michael and I will stay on a few more moments, yeah. but we want to go ahead and, and consciously close it for everyone else who wants to, who wants to leave. So, yeah. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And thank you for helping us stay in that tension. And about um, the document service, it was specific. I got him. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> OK, so thank you. I didn't quite hear what that was, but I, I just muted him. That's all. All right. All right. So yeah, give your give your hands up a round of applause. Let's see that. Let's yeah. see that on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Nice. Beautiful work on holding the space. You really, really did a great job. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you did. You really did. Yeah. So everyone who needs to leave, go ahead and leave. If you want to stay and ask questions about the program, we'll hang with you to do that. And we'll record this part for those of you who want to see these questions later. Okay. So I see Ken uh, has his hand raised. Uh, so we do. His hand raised. Okay. Hey, Ken. Hey, how are you? Good to see you. Man. It's good to see you as well. It's good to see you all. Um, yeah, I'm just curious whether the intensives are they in person or is this all virtual? What's the thoughts on that? 
uh, this year they're all virtual until um, I investigated doing live uh, uh, programs and um, um, it just seems like it, it's, it's a loop still a little bit hard and people say yeah. they want to do it, um, but, you know, it's much more costly and uh, mm -hmm. so, uh, we have to. There's, there's another reason I'm jumping in, Michael, sorry jump, sure. to jump on you, but there's another reason why doing it virtual because like this is the hardest environment. <laughs> And this is the one we're in quite often. So we might as well be in this environment together. Yeah. Although I could see a desire to be together after like, let's say we've done like 10 of these cohorts and we have like a really great group of people who really want to get together for some advanced work. Then we're going to get in person and, you know, yeah. really dig it. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a great to see the environment you're going to practice in. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, great. Thanks, Ken. Did that did did that respond to, uh, to what you were wanting? Yes, thank you. Yeah, yeah. that's responded. It was a it was a cost uh, factor, absolutely, and also just trying to understand the um, what to expect in terms of the interaction, the way we relate. So, thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Great, Brandon, you're on. Thank you. Uh, the dates that you showed on the screen with the sessions uh, after the intensive, are those full day sessions or partial day sessions? Um, those are partial days. So the so the practicum is, um, I can't remember who got it at three. Two or three hours, hours like somewhere yeah. in that range, Brandon. Yeah. yeah. So okay. it's, yeah. And then, and then the completion is a similar amount of time. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and don't be, we'll, we'll provide much much more detailed information um probably the early part of next week uh, it'll go out and, and yeah yeah Thank when you. registration is up then then they'll then you'll be able to say can i really do this with my calendar yeah, that's yeah. Right. yeah yeah when registration comes up it's really interesting what happens for us all that's where the rubber meets the road and <laughs> and you know the, the thing is, is that when you register for something, it actually, it creates the possibility of, of that thing that you're registering it for. Yep, yep. Cool. Okay. Other questions about the deep dive? Kev, come on in. I, um, the, I, I already know for certain that the, the, the tail end of that, the 19th and the third, I'm going to be away traveling. So I can't make the sessions already but mm -hmm. are you planning to do more of these beyond the current your, your current program here oh absolutely yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and we also get that the times for this first deep dive are not apac friendly yeah yeah oh. Right. So it, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. But as we do more of them, the possibility to do them on that time on that time zone friendly side of the world can can happen yeah yeah, yeah. Right. thank you thank you other questions good enough for now hi hi michael sorry i, I was reading um something that I wrote down to be able to, it's not even a question yet, um, it's more a permission, because while you were speaking, I was trying to make a connection about like, how do you go about, uh, when you were talking about, especially about the bigger game in the in quadrant, right? And I couldn't make a connection really well. So I was wondering if I think a little bit more, if it's okay if I send you an email with a, a more detailed question. So that we can oh, answer that way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, Bernie. I, Thank I would you. be happy for that. Hanmoy, greetings. We've just ended the session. These are just a few stragglers who are hanging out for, you know. <laughs> <laughs> lost, we lost Hanmoy. Oh, you're back again. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, did that? Okay, great, great, Bernie. Thank you. Hey, Michael, great to see you. Good to see you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Tom, why do you have any questions? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, re request to record with your dream. Yeah, yeah, we're recording. We'll give it to you, Tom. Why? Yeah, 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 absolutely. We'll make the recording available. And... Yeah, great. Okay. okay. Bye. Wave and goodbye. That sounds good. 
Thanks for attending the first webinar and You're sticking around to ask Thanks, questions. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks, Michael. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.